The video game market has a very special economy. Back a few years ago, if you wanted to buy a game, you could drive yourself down to the local GameStop, plop 60 bucks down on the counter, and call it a day. But it's not that simple anymore. Today, you have a million different collector's editions, special editions and season passes that are jam-packed within our games like an overfilled stocking come St. Nick's favorite holiday. But unlike Christmas, you're not getting anything for free. You can pay hundreds of dollars for games today, and some say it's getting out of control. If you want to look for a deal though, you've got options. Steam is stuffed to the brim with a slew of games that cover the entire spectrum of price points, from $60 AAA games all the way down that hole to indies as cheap as 25 cents. The indie market accounts for a massive slice of the gaming market, and these games are everywhere, their price points fluctuating so wildly from site to site that you're sure to get a deal if you keep digging around. But that begs the real questions. Why is there so much fishtailing with game prices? Who's getting paid? And how is it possible that game prices may be different depending on where you look? That's what I'm about to answer. According to a study by the LA Times, your 60 bucks is more or less chopped up as follows. $27 goes to the publisher for funding that game. $15 goes to the retailer for distribution. $7 goes towards a bucket called Returns and Losses. $7 goes to paying royalties to companies such as Sony and Microsoft for hosting the hardware. And $4 goes to distribution, so like the cost of overhead, material, shipping, stuff like that. $27 is quite a small cut, some would say. It's only 45% of the total sale, less taxes. And that's not even the revenue. That's to make the actual game, market it, and pay your employees. At the end of the day, publishers may barely see a 3 to $8 profit when all is said and done. A lot of hands touch our games, and they all have to be paid. And that $60 price point isn't going up. You can count on it for two reasons. It's because the average age of gamers has been dropping over the last five years, according to survey studies. We just don't have the disposable income for all of our favorite games as young people. In addition, distributors can't risk increasing that $60 price point for fear of gamers simply going elsewhere to pick up their games for cheaper. But as digital platforms such as Steam, GOG, and Origin continue to replace physical game purchases with digital ones, it's actually likely at some point that the average price of a AAA game might actually drop below $60, as evident by the alarmingly fast turnaround time for discounts. It's not uncommon to see a AAA game release at $60 and have a price drop within a month or two. This is happening to more and more games recently, most certainly due to the growing number of games available to purchase. Unlike other goods like cars that become discontinued after a certain number of years, video games don't have that setback. Steam and digital libraries have immunized old games because they're always available to purchase now. As more and more games release, the number of games only goes up. It will never go down. And because we know that the more competition there is, the more reduction of prices, it's easy to see why $60 games discount so rapidly. Lastly, add Kickstarter on top of that delicious Sunday, and we've got a whole new ball game. Games that were impossible to be made due to financial obstacles now have safe passage to be born with assistance from the common wallet, and that only increases the already progressively increasing number of games available. Thus, more competition and more pressure reductions to overall game prices. So it's the pressure weighing down an already inundated market where the average buyer has less and less disposable income as the average age of gamers drops in tandem. Will we see AAA games standardized to $55 or $50 in the next 10 years? Anything's possible, especially with the pricing and discount trends currently on display. And of course the future is ripe, with the potential for improvements to technology to cause game creation to become more efficient, require less physical hands and heads, and shrink those giant corporate development buildings and the rents that they run up. All of those could lead to reductions of future video game prices as well. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe to Downward Thrust now and you'll get a heads up for future content like this, and have a kick ass day.